Ever wondered why New Zealand is called the land of the long white cloud? The answer lies in the beautiful language of the Maori people, the indigenous Polynesian inhabitants of New Zealand. They call the country Aotearoa, which roughly translates to the land of the long white cloud. In the Maori language, Ao means cloud, day or world, T means white, clear or bright, and Roa means long. So woven together, Aotearoa paints a picture of a long, bright, cloud-filled world. You see, the Maori people have a deep connection with nature, and this name is a testament to that bond. But why a long white cloud? Well, it's all about geography. Picture this, New Zealand is composed of two main islands, the North Island and the South Island, stretching over 1,600 kilometers in the vast Pacific Ocean. Now imagine from a distance these islands appearing as a long white cloud on the horizon. The first Maori explorers who arrived on the canoes were greeted by this sight. The long cloud formations over the land would have been a welcoming beacon, guiding them to their new home. This striking visual is believed to have inspired the name Aotearoa, and it has stuck ever since. Over time, Aotearoa has come to symbolize not just the physical landscape of New Zealand, but also its cultural identity. It reflects the Maori's reverence for nature and their deep spiritual connection to the land. It's a name that tells a story, a name that carries the weight of history and the spirit of a people. So the next time you look at a map and see the name New Zealand, remember the Maori name Aotearoa. Think of the long white clouds that stretch across the sky the pristine landscapes that stretch as far as the eye can see, and the rich cultural history that permeates every corner of this country. So, the beautiful and captivating cloud formations and landscapes of New Zealand have given it this poetic name. Did you know that the southernmost capital in the world is in New Zealand? Indeed, it's Wellington, a vibrant city perched on the southwestern tip of New Zealand's North Island. Its geographical location, nestled between rolling hills and a stunning harbor, gives it a unique, picturesque charm. Now let's talk about the climate. Wellington is known for its often windy conditions, earning it the nickname Windy Wellington. But don't let that deter you. The wind is a refreshing element, adding to the city's lively atmosphere. As for cultural significance, Wellington is a hub of Maori culture and arts. It's home to the National Museum, Te Papa, a treasure trove of New Zealand's history. Wellington also hosts the world-famous World of Wearable Art Show, where art comes to life on a global stage. Wellington, the southernmost capital, is a city that beautifully combines nature and urban life. Have you ever heard of a bird that cannot fly and has whiskers like a cat? Well, let's take a trip to New Zealand where such a bird exists. This bird is none other than the kiwi, a fascinating creature with unique characteristics that set it apart from the rest of the avian kingdom. The kiwi bird is a flightless bird, much like the ostrich or the penguin. However, unlike these birds, the kiwi doesn't have wings that have evolved for different purposes. Its wings are so tiny that they are virtually invisible, hidden under the kiwi's thick, hair-like feathers. Speaking of feathers, the kiwi's feathers are more like hair than traditional bird feathers. They are soft and fluffy, providing excellent insulation against New Zealand's sometimes chilly climate. But it's not just the feathers that are unusual. The kiwi has nostrils at the end of its long beak, a feature not found in any other bird species. This unique adaptation allows the kiwi to sniff out food, such as insects and worms, buried deep in the ground. The kiwi bird's distinctive characteristics don't end there. It is also the bird with the largest egg-to-body size ratio in the world. A kiwi egg can be up to one-third of the mother's body weight. This is like a human giving birth to a six-year-old child. But why is this quirky bird so significant to New Zealand's identity? Well, the kiwi has become a national symbol, embodying the unique and diverse wildlife found in the country. The term kiwi is not just used to refer to the bird, but is also a nickname for New Zealanders themselves. This shows just how intertwined the kiwi bird is with the nation's identity. The kiwi bird is also a symbol of conservation in New Zealand. Despite being an endangered species due to habitat loss and predation, 
Efforts are being made to protect and preserve these unique birds, reflecting New Zealand's commitment to biodiversity. The kiwi bird, a unique and endearing symbol of New Zealand, truly represents the country's distinctive biodiversity. What can the traditional Maori haka tell us about New Zealand's rich culture? New Zealand, a land of breathtaking landscapes, is also home to a vibrant and rich culture that is deeply rooted in its indigenous Maori heritage. The Maori people, who make up about 15% of New Zealand's population, have a profound influence on the country's identity, shaping its customs, language, and arts. Perhaps nothing embodies the spirit and vitality of Maori culture more than the haka, a traditional Maori dance. This powerful and stirring display of the Maori people's strength and unity is not merely a performance, but a sacred ritual passed down through generations. The haka is a dance of war, performed by Maori warriors before battle. It's a potent mix of fierce facial expressions, rhythmic foot stamping, and vigorous body movements. But the haka is not just about physical prowess. It's a spiritual dance that tells a story, each movement symbolizing an aspect of Maori mythology and history. In the modern era, the haka has transcended its martial origins and has become a symbol of New Zealand's national identity. You'll see it performed at significant events, from rugby matches to state functions, encapsulating the unity and resilience of the nation. But the haka is merely one facet of the rich tapestry that is Maori culture. The Maori people's deep respect for nature is reflected in their art, their intricate carvings telling tales of their ancestors and the land. Their language, Te Reo Maori, is one of New Zealand's official languages and is woven into the country's everyday speech. The Maori worldview, or Te Ao Maori, which values connection and respect for all living things, also influences New Zealand's approach to conservation and environmental stewardship. The Hakka and Maori culture are more than just traditions. They are living, breathing parts of New Zealand's identity, shaping the nation's character and guiding its future. As we delve deeper into the heart of New Zealand, we'll continue to encounter the influence of the Maori, their culture a testament to the country's rich past and vibrant present. The Hakka and Maori culture are integral parts of New Zealand's unique cultural identity. Why is New Zealand known as the adventure capital of the world, you may wonder? Well, sit tight and prepare for a thrilling ride as we delve into the heart-pounding world of adventure that is New Zealand. This enchanting country, with its diverse landscapes, serves as an enormous playground for thrill-seekers and adrenaline junkies. From the rugged mountain peaks that kiss the sky, to the deep turquoise waters that ripple with untamed beauty, New Zealand is a stage set for the bold and the brave. Imagine hurling yourself off a bridge with only an elastic cord as your lifeline. Welcome to the world of bungee jumping, a sport that New Zealand is famous for. It was here that commercial bungee jumping had its humble beginnings, and today, the country is home to many of the world's highest bungee jumps. But the adventure doesn't stop at bungee jumping. New Zealand's wild rivers are perfect for whitewater rafting. Paddle hard, hold on tight, and let the rapids take you on a wild, wet ride. Or perhaps you'd prefer to surf the waves. With a coastline that stretches over 9,000 miles, there's a wave for every surfer. If you prefer your adventures high above the ground, then skydiving is the sport for you. Feel the rush of wind against your face as you plunge towards the earth, taking in the breathtaking views of New Zealand's landscapes from an entirely new perspective. For those who prefer a slower pace, hiking in New Zealand is a must. The country's extensive network of trails takes you through some of the most stunning natural scenery on the planet, from lush rainforests to towering mountain ranges. And let's not forget the thrill of skiing down New Zealand's snowy slopes, the exhilaration of windsurfing its coastal waters, or the challenge of rock climbing its craggy cliffs. The possibilities for adventure are seemingly endless. From bungee jumping to hiking, New Zealand truly earns its title as the adventure capital of the world. How did a fantasy trilogy transform New Zealand into a popular tourist destination, you may ask? Well, let's delve into the magical world of Middle Earth, brought to life by the phenomenal Lord of the Rings trilogy. These films didn't just redefine the fantasy genre, they also catapulted New Zealand into the global spotlight. 
The impact of the trilogy on New Zealand's tourism industry is nothing short of remarkable. The country's stunning landscapes, from the rolling green hills of the Shire to the majestic peaks of the misty mountains, all featured in the films, became the star attractions for millions of global tourists. The trilogy's success led to an influx of visitors, all eager to explore these cinematic landscapes. From Matamata's Hobbiton to Wellington's Mount Victoria, every corner of the country transformed into a real-life Middle Earth, attracting fans from all over the globe.